Hi and welcome to another episode of Vlogs of History. As always, I'm your host Darius Cousin, and this week we're taking a look at something that we've all at least seen once in our lives, the Statue of Liberty. You may be thinking, what could be said about the Statue of Liberty? What's the history behind it? Well, let me tell you that there actually is a very nice story behind the Statue of Liberty and its creation. And that's what we're going to look at this week, so let's get to it. So let's start by answering this question, who made the Statue of Liberty? The answer is that it was both made by France and the United States. It was essentially a joint effort to commemorate a long and lasting friendship between the two countries. The task was split in two. France would build the actual statue itself, while the United States would build the pedestal and they would be in charge of finding a location to put the statue. Once finished in France, it was given to the United States where it was assembled and erected atop the American designed pedestal located on a small island now known as Liberty Island. It became a really important monument and it was usually the first things immigrants saw when they were coming into the country by boat. It was a great symbol of American freedom and everything America stands for. When immigrants would come to the United States, they would see the statue and they would be filled with hope of a new and better life. The statue was made in 1865. As the American Civil War drew to a close, French historian Edouard de Laboulaye proposed that they give the United States a statue to celebrate the nation's success in building a viable democracy. The task was given to Frédéric Auguste Bartholzi, who wanted to also build it to celebrate a hundred years since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. I mean, it was all perfect time. The American Civil War was ending and it was also the centennial anniversary of the big declaration of independence. You had to give them a statue. The actual statue is of a woman who is represented by the Greek goddess of freedom. She's holding a torch and she's holding a tablet where it's inscripted July 4th, 1776 to commemorate the declaration of independence. Fun fact, Bartadzi built the skin of the statue, while the skeleton was given to Alexandre Gustave Eiffel. Now if that name sounds familiar, it's probably because that's the man who also built the Eiffel Tower. Quite interesting, huh? On the American side, to build the pedestal, well, they needed funds. Funds that were surprisingly hard to get. They had to make many efforts and try very different ways to actually raise enough funds to build the pedestal of the statue. Publisher Joseph Pulitzer of the New York World started a fundraising to actually raise the funds for the pedestal of the statue. He attracted about 120,000 contributors, most of whom donated less than a dollar. Even with those small amounts of donations, that was enough to actually build the pedestal and he was the main reason that they actually managed to get the funds for the pedestal. Until 1901, one, the lighthouse board operated the Statue of Liberty. This was because the torch acted as a lighthouse and a navigational aid for sailors. After that date, it was placed under the jurisdiction of the US War Department and it acted as an army post. In 1924, the government made it a national monument and in 1933, it was given over to the National Park Service. The statue's height is of 305 feet. Estimated to weigh around 225 tons, it's safe to say that it's a pretty big statue. I mean, if you've ever been near the statue, you've seen how big it is and you can imagine how heavy it must be. It was built in France and then shipped over in 200 individual crates and then assembled and erected on the United States. To this day, it remains a symbol of friendship between France and the United States. The statue was opened up to the public for those who wanted to really see it up close and you could actually go inside. After the 9-11 attacks though, the access was restricted until 2004, with the crown only being accessible as late as 2009. So if you get a chance, make sure to go see it. I mean, now you know the history behind it, so it's worth taking a look. I mean, it's very easily accessible, just go to New York City take a ferry and you're already there. All right, that was it for this week's episode of Vlogs of History. If you've enjoyed it, as always, leave a like, share it to a friend, and subscribe to be notified when the next episode comes out. Leave me a comment down below to let me know what you want to see in future videos. I do read your comments and I do look at them for inspiration all the time. If you're new to the show, click that subscribe button and make sure to check out the previous episodes right here. We've covered some very interesting topics. Remember, these episodes come out every Monday, so be sure to stay tuned for those. As always, I'm your host, Darius Cousin. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's been an absolute pleasure and I will see you all next Monday.